It's the end of the 19th century in Truvine, Virginia, and albino brothers Willie and George Muse are out working in the tobacco fields. Suddenly, they're whisked away by a stranger and forced to perform as circus freaks in front of crowds. Meanwhile, their mother tries her best to reunite with her sons, but will they ever be a family again? The boy's story began in 1899 when nine year old Willie and his six year old brother George were living with their mother Harriet in the sharecropping area of Truvine. As albinos, the African American brothers were born without pigmentation in their hair and skin, leaving them as unusually pale appearances. The grandchildren of slaves, Willie and George, were put to work from a young age, exterminating bugs on the plants. But in 1899, their lives would change for good. As the story goes, the children were out in the fields when they were approached by Robert Stokes, a man who worked in the circus industry. At the time, circuses were among the most popular shows of entertainment in the United States, and one of the biggest draws were the freak shows, displays of people with unusual physical characteristics, which the operators often embellished with fictional stories regarding these individuals' supposed exotic origins. It's unknown how Stokes found out about William George, but nonetheless, their albinism undoubtedly made them attractive to an industry that cashed in on apparent peculiarities. Allegedly, Stokes used candy to lure the impoverished brothers into a waiting carriage before whisking them away from their family. And although the full details are unclear, indeed some claim that Harriet willingly gave her boys to Stokes, we do know that Willie and George eventually came to the attention of a freak show proprietor known as James Candy Shelton. Then from 1914, the boys were on their way to becoming stars of the circus world. At first, the strangeness of Willie and George's appearances was sufficient in keeping the crowds entertained. Then later, somebody hit upon the idea of giving the pair instruments to liven up their act. However, the brothers surprised everyone when they displayed an incredible level of musical talent. Apparently, they were able to play almost any tune after first hearing it. Then over time, Willie and George were molded to make them look even more unusual to crowds of the period. Dressed in elaborate costumes, the pair had their hair styled into long dreadlocks that sprouted from their heads. And by the 1920s, the brothers had become part of the famous Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. What's more, there were certainly precedent for members of freak shows to become famous in their own rights. Conjoined twins Chang and Ang were two individuals who became renowned across the U.S. during the 19th century. The Wild Men of Borneo, two dwarf siblings who exhibited tremendous strength by lifting visitors, also made their names after having been scouted by P.T. Barnum. As for Willie and George, the pair were both given stage names Eco and Ico, and some outlandish origin stories. At one point, the brothers were exhibited as cannibals who had been found roaming the wilds of Ecuador, or alternatively, members of a sheep-heading tribe. In yet another story, the two had reportedly been discovered aboard a raft drifting off the Madagascar coast. But while circus promoters were busy spinning elaborate tales, Willie and George's mother was desperately searching for her lost sons. By that time, Harriet had moved to the up-and-coming city of Roanoke in Virginia to secure more lucrative employment, and it was here that she apparently experienced a prophetic dream. According to Muse family lore, Harriet had dreamed that Willie and George were on their way to Roanoke as part of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. This turned out to actually be the case. And when the brothers' train arrived in the city in October 1927, she joined the throngs of people heading to the fairgrounds, hoping to catch a glimpse of the axe. By that time, Willie and George were performing under perhaps their boldest tagline yet, with a banner outside the sideshow suggesting that they might be aliens from Mars. However, when Harriet managed to make her way to the front of the crowd, the young men recognized their mother at once, even though they'd been told she was no longer alive. Then, during the emotional reunion, the boy's circus manager, Shelton, arrived, insisting that Willie and George belonged to him. Yet, even though she was a poor black woman facing up against a wealthy white man, Harriet stood her ground. They're my children, she's reported to have said. Can't no white man have birthed two colored children. Amazingly, the ploy worked, and Harriet was allowed to leave the circus with her sons in tow. Then, mere days later, she attempted something even more audacious, a legal battle against the mighty Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus Empire, all in the hopes of getting justice for her sons. And ultimately, she was victorious in securing backdated pay for the time that her brothers had spent performing. But although Willie and George initially returned to live with Harriet, they found the cramped conditions, not to mention her overbearing new husband, a challenge. 
as a result they were back at the circus within a year of having first left this time however Harriet ensured that the brothers were lining their own pockets as well as those of their circus bosses during this period Willie and George's careers hit new highs apparently they met the King of England at Buckingham Palace toured the Hawaiian Islands and appeared in front of vast crowds at Madison Square Garden in New York but despite their success Shelton still watched their every move furthermore those responsible for paying Willie and George their wages often fell behind but Harriet never gave up and with her team of lawyers she always ensured that her sons got their money eventually she was even able to purchase a farmhouse and so begin dragging the Muse family out of poverty then in 1942 Harriet died after suffering a heart attack having never seen her sons retire from the circus business two decades later however the brothers finally returned to Roanoke to live out their days in a house bought with the money that their mother had put aside George eventually passed away in 1972 while Willie lived to the grand old age of 108 dying in 2001 and after George's death writer and Roanoke native Beth Macy was granted permission to produce a series of articles about the brothers a big step for the notoriously secretive muse family slowly she gained the muses trust and ended up publishing a book about the brothers story entitled true vine in 2016 now a movie adaptation of true vine is also being touted meaning the truth about Willie and George's incredible lives may be brought to the masses at last